Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Lowry with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, and today we're out here on beautiful Puget Sound getting ready to do some scientific bottom trolling. The trolling that we're doing drags a net across the bottom and samples fish, and we use the information that we collect to estimate the abundance and distribution of these animals. Today we'll hit a variety of stations. You'll see some common species, hopefully some rare ones, maybe some you've never even seen before. So step aboard and join me for a day in the life of a fisheries biologist. So one very important thing when we're doing scientific trawling is to make sure that the counts of fish that we make are also expandable by some sort of a standardized measure. And in this case, we use density. So we use a variety of tools to instrument the net. These are bottom contact sensors that contain accelerometers. And essentially, when these contact sensors hit the bottom, they've been free falling through the water with the weight of the net. And when they touch down, there's a very clear signal because they change speed and acceleration. And that tells us when the net actually impacts the bottom, which lets us know when it starts fishing. We'll also put a CTD on the head rope, which records the depth, the temperature, and the salinity. And that depth reading that we get tells us high, how high off the bottom the net is fishing. So the bottom has made contact, and now the head rope, or the top of the mouth of the net, is at a fixed depth that we can get off of the CTD. Right now we're up in the wheelhouse where Jen is recording the basic information that we need about where the troll is occurring, what depth, how much wire is going out to put the net on the bottom. This is all information that we later use to determine, again, where we've been and what we're catching in those given locations. So we've just completed a haul and we're bringing the caught end of the net on. We're gonna lift it up and swing it over the spool here and drop it onto the sorting table. And once the fish have been spilled out on the sorting table, they'll be separated by species, and in some cases by sex. So as you can see, there's a variety of fish on the table here. There are also several invertebrate species, mostly crab and shrimp in this hall. We also count, and in the case of uh, crab, sex these individuals. And in addition for the crab, we also keep track of both keeper and non-keeper males. So males that are large enough to retain in a fishery. So once the fish have been sorted by species, they're transferred over here to the weighing table, where Jen and Courtney are splitting them, weighing them, counting them in some cases, and then recording the weight of each individual basket. Once a group of fish has been sorted to species and weighed, for certain species, they come over here to the lengthening and sex determination station, where Pete and Aaron are working through various different species, and they record the length on this strip, and then afterward, we process that to see how many fish we had of any given length. So Bob has a bucket of hake here, and what he's doing is determining the sex of each fish. He's slitting open the side and looking inside to determine whether they have an ovary or a testes, either male or female. And then he's sorting them into two different bins. We'll then take these over to the table and measure the length of them. And the reason this is important is because in stock assessment, you not only need to know how many fish there are, but how many fish of each sex are out there. So that you have a good idea how the mating populations are working.
In addition to sampling adult fish, in the past couple of years, we've added taking vertical plankton tows to our sampling regime. So what you can see here is Jim and Jen lowering a plankton net. They're going to drop this down to a fixed depth, and then they're going to pull it up at a pretty high rate of speed uh, up through the water column. And it's going to collect the very small things like larval fish, juvenile invertebrates, things like that that are in the water column. We'll then hose that down into a sample container, and later we'll look through that in the lab to determine what baby fish are out here along with the adults. For some species, we take genetic samples. We take a small clip of tissue from the fin of the fish, we put it into alcohol, and later we pass this over to our genetics lab, who looks at population differences among different groups of fish in the sound. So we're coming to the end of a beautiful day on the water. We've done several tows. We've counted thousands of fish, but our work is nowhere near done. Now we take all of this information, together with information from several more days of trawling, back to the lab. And we create density estimates. We look at distribution patterns for these fish. We compare to what's happened over the years. And ultimately, that gives us a lot of power to really look at how these populations are changing over time.